just thinking about it a moment ago when we first started. Yeah, that episode with Fully Unscripted, that was you and uh, was Sam on Sam, there? Yeah, Sam. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I just saw he was with like James Harden last yeah, night. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. Like, what were they doing? Restaurant or something? Do you know? Uh, no. Um, I didn't know. He said he was, he was, a, he was opening a restaurant or something, I guess. Yeah, it, I guess James just opened up a new restaurant yeah. in Houston called 13. <clears throat> Looks like Steakhouse. Looks pretty nice. I guess for Fred, that'd be a cool yeah, friend that's to a have. Fun little room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Did James, he didn't retire, right? Did he just go somewhere? I'm not even completely sure. Like that's, I, it's hard to keep up with that them. class NBA of guys. I, yeah, I was gonna say I don't have bandwidth to keep up with yeah. like the NBA also, but like, seems like that class of guys is kind of right there on the line of like considering yeah, leaving so like, and yeah, doing like, something else. So like, yeah. I can't remember if Noah. Yeah. Do you know <clears throat> James Harden? Sports. He <laughs> sports a lot. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Bo, do you do sports? Football mainly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't keep up with. I keep up with Kentucky basketball a lot, but um, yeah, NBA basketball I don't. No, yeah, I used to, but when I was younger. But what's that like being uh, on the football team at UK, and then you got the UK basketball team, and like, th- do you ever nerd out like some of the other, you know, um, kids on campus? Or I'd say like uh, maybe like when I was a freshman, I was I don't know if I'd say like the. If I'd say like nerd, maybe I don't know if I'd use nerd or out, like but, whatever. Yeah, but I'm definitely whatever a fan. You want to say. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, definitely fanboy. Yeah, um, <laughs> like I, uh, like I've kept up with this team probably more than mm-hmm. um, any team I had since I've been in college. So Why? Probably they're really fun to watch. I like compared to the past couple of years, um, I've gotten to know like I've met a couple guys, and my girlfriend, she's actually she, my girlfriend's from London, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And her family knows Reed's family a little bit, and I've got to meet okay. him just twice. But um, and her family seems great, and Reed seems like an incredible person. So that's been fun to keep up with him, and kind of like another, um, it's like added reason to why they're even more fun to watch. And he's doing really well too. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, so obviously you're an, an athlete with a trained eye. So is there anything that you could see that you think is contributing to why this team is so successful? I um, mean. Like I don't know. The, I mean, like the only thing I'd say is they seem like they're having fun with each other. Um, I'm not. What indicates fun to you? <laughs> like when you're um, yeah, watching, like yeah, is it like, smiles? Is it like yeah, certain um, body language? What is it? Like there's a bit of seriousness, but not maybe all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, or they're still able to laugh and not play super uptight. I would say that um, like if one person goes down or falls on the court. It seems like all of them come by to help somebody up. Um, but Which like, by the way, that's always like my favorite thing when they lay there and they just look like a, a turtle that turned yeah, upside and down. And there's like, wait, like, I don't yeah. know how to get up until yeah. somebody comes to pick me up. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> and they're like, yeah, they probably just dunk the basketball yeah. like two or three minutes ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think, um, that's something that I, I could maybe pick up or think about, but mm-hmm. X's and O's wise, I don't really, I don't know much about what they're yeah. doing, but, um, so how does I pick up? I mean, like you're talking about that culture and camaraderie and getting along and having a genuine good time together as people Mm -hmm. obviously is translating on the court right now for this team. Yes. Does that work in football in a similar way? Yeah, Uh, absolutely. Does it look different? I mean, we can't see smiles behind, you know, helmets and face masks and things, you know? So like, I'm curious, what does that look like at the field level? I think, um, in comparison, it definitely helps when you're like, uh, like there's like you can't hang out with every player on the team maybe as much as you would with others, but you mm-hmm. can tell when a bond just comes off a little more. Um, it just comes off naturally, and I think that can help, like especially with like for example like a quarterback and a receiver. Um, I think that the better you know somebody, the better you know them as a person. It's a lot easier to communicate with them, and once like that happens, it just makes it even easier to. I just get on the same page if you're throwing a yeah. ball to a receiver on one certain route and the timing has to be right. So I think that um, really just the there's an extra component when it comes to getting to know your teammates, but like actually enjoying, like not just kind of like a forced thing. It's kind of just like something that – yeah. Um, it's Instead of just like, like some people kind of – like if a coach on some team, maybe like my guys need to get to know each other better, but there's a bit of like, sometimes there's been times in the past when I've seen athletes kind of be forced to do that and that may not really work, but so some like, yeah. you can kind of tell like this with this basketball team that I'm sure like 
it seems like Cal wouldn't have to force these guys to like hang out with one another. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I, no, I, it, a bit of it's that. funny that you bring that up because I've been thinking about that just even away from like athletics where it's just like people in general, you know, what is the intent behind who we're hanging out with or why we do the things that we do? You know, mm -hmm. like if you have to, it feels contrived in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. Like, manufacturing these opportunities in the corporate world where they're like, okay, we're going to finish an hour early today and everybody's going to get out of their cubicle and come hang out in the lobby together and have drinks. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like, well, you're manufacturing a chance for people that work together to like hang out and kind of, you know, get to chill, mm -hmm. which I think on, on the surface sounds like a good idea, but at the same time, it's also like, yeah, get in there and get in there get along yeah, exactly. now yeah and it's like, like i bet some people are probably like, so i just want to go weird home. about that yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um i mean maybe that's the catalyst or like the the kick start to some people actually maybe, like yeah, being friends or, yeah. or whatever and they needed that push but probably not like a continuous thing i i imagine yeah, that, that wouldn't be too beneficial but yeah. yeah i like like a kick start can maybe be good like if <clears throat> like new people come to a company or something where you're like like you said you have drinks or something on a Friday instead of like working one more hour. Yeah. But, um, you kind of like continuously having to do that, which may just, some scenarios may just not work out, but yeah. In I terms mean, of it, people working together and being friends, but well, you're one of the <clears throat> senior guys on the team. You're in what your sixth, fifth. You're, well, <laughs> yeah. this it will a, be my fifth. This upcoming okay. season. Right. Right. Yes, right. Yes. Okay. I couldn't remember if it was, I'm trying it's to been, remember like COVID couple. years yeah, and all the yeah. things, you know? Yeah. Um, is this your COVID year? Um, this would technically be like my red shirt. So like, even if like, let's say COVID didn't I know, didn't I'm trying happen. to keep up with all your... <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, like if, if COVID didn't happen, I could still have this year. This would be called like my red shirt senior mm -hmm. year. And I could do another and I guess that would be what would be used as... Like that year, <laughs> that year would still would become from COVID. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, could, I could be playing and I'm 22 now and I could be 25 if I played every single year that I couldn't go. It's wild. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm not like, I'm not here to say that it's right, but like, I kind of, yeah, yeah. it's like the same thing with the transfer portal. I think there's some pros and cons, but I mean, I've taken advantage of it, but that doesn't mean that I don't, um, like there, there could maybe be some regulation, but, um, if it's going to be in place, you might as well use it to the, your best yeah. advantage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what, yeah. I there's say. always going to be different <clears throat> ways that people take advantage of it positively and negatively. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously your case is a, a real positive. Mm -hmm. You've, you went to Tarleton first, right? Yeah, so Whenever you Tarl left. Yeah, Tarleton State University in Stephenville, Texas for one season, then Georgia Southern University for one season, and then I'm back here now. Yeah, and there's no more like sitting out or anything, right? No. Like, yeah, you I can do whatever yes. you want. Yes. But yeah. Um, that's, like, what, like, that's been good for you as, yes, it as has, a hometown yes. boy to come yes, back and, yes. and do the thing. No, but no, for no. other, like, people are trying to weaponize that a little bit with NIL mixed in with it of like, well, whoever's going to be the highest bidder to help me out, I'm going to go there and mm -hmm. just transfer. Or I yeah, guess I, student yeah. athletes can use that as a threat to the program too and be like, yeah, prob yes. uh, you know, you're not starting me like I, I want you to. So I have mm -hmm. the chance to dip now if I want to. Yeah. You know? I, um, my th I think it's a good thing. I could, like if, if I had to give like an answer of yes or no, I think it's a good thing. Um, I think that. It's like the one thing that always comes to me is like a coach can recruit you for four years and then like the day you get to campus, like he can leave. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that's what, and I have no problem with that at all. That's how, I mean, that's how it should be. Like if there's a better opportunity, you should absolutely do it and you shouldn't not do it just because you were trying to get one kid to come here. So I yeah. think that, I think it's a good thing. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of more regulations over the next four or five years or something, but mm -hmm. I think uh, it's here to stay one way or the other and probably yeah. should just for, uh, I guess, the freedom and the choice that... Well, any other kid on campus have. has a chance to transfer yeah. and go somewhere else, yeah. whether it's for athletics or, or right. I mean, sorry, for academia or some yeah. other reason. Well, any, you know, yeah, so. any reason. I, yeah, yeah, I think it's a... Yeah, like I said, if I had to say yes or no or like yay or nay, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. But I'm, I bet there'll be some... Uh, I don't know what kind of regulations, but I bet there'll be some changes over the next couple of years, probably. Yeah. How's uh, NIL stuff that you're seeing around the team? I mean, um, it's awesome. And how's for, it for like, you as well, personally? Um, 
I mean, I think and there's some guys who probably are really killing it, but I think it's a great thing. Um, like for me, like though, like I do more stuff. Like if I, um, like I wouldn't get something from like, uh, like I kind of just do like something for like a company or something here and down or post something on Instagram or do something sort of like that. But it's a good thing that you can, um, if you like, I'm, there was a gym called Jim blue mm-hmm. here in town and I never, so like it's a new gym. I never heard of the gym, but, um, I was just, one of my buddies is doing some of their, uh, like he was just taking photos for the gym or something. And, um, who is it? His name is Zach Purvis. Okay. And, um, basically it's like relationships are become built over things like is what NIL can do for people now. And like, I've mm-hmm. like, uh, just new relationships, new ideas that you hear from people. Um, I think it, it does a lot of great things and also for a lot of people it can change their life and change their family's life. So I think it's yeah. great. And, um, like one thing I always think about with NIL is like, I don't know if you saw the Johnny Manziel documentary and it said, I never watched the the thing. I, there was, I watched so, his interview with yeah, Shannon Sharp recently. I, I need to watch, I haven't watched that. Yeah, that's pretty I'm not, I'm going to be wrong with the numbers here, but it said after his Heisman winning season, the university received like double or maybe not double, but almost double of the amount of donations to the university after mm-hmm. that season and like he wouldn't receive any part of that yeah. and yeah he, he ended up getting some stuff like under the table but where do you go at a&m yeah right and, yeah. yeah but it was like like let's say they received like i don't know they received like 50 million one year after his year they received like 80 million or something in donations yeah. to the university and um and like and to capitalize off of that like he he uh had to go to like miami and sign autographs and take cash from random people you know what i'm saying so yeah. i think um it's it's just uh so it provides more structure because like when I think when an athlete like that, like a Heisman winner of some sort, the one way or the other, people are going to come to them and try to give them money because they think they can make money off of them some other way. So I think mm. it's probably for people of that stature, like the, like let's say if NIL wasn't happening and like Reed Shepard was still playing the same way that he was. Um, I'm not saying he would do anything like take anything or do anything like that. I'm just saying there'd be some bad people out there who'd probably want to try to capitalize off him and try to like include him in something or yeah. they just, uh, I guess it provides more area for somebody to do the wrong thing. I'm not talking about Reed. I'm talking about yeah, yeah. like no, companies or sure. who's ever trying to do like capitalize off. Well, it would have to live in the dark and that's yeah, what exactly. it did forever, yeah. right? Like yeah. live in the shadows and everything's secretive and <clears throat> whatnot. So, and now it can come to light because you could do it legally. Mm-hmm. No, I think, yeah, I think it's a great thing. Um, I know like some people would like the main, like if somebody's against it, I think a lot of people say like there should be a cap of some sort or something, but I think that's just because like they see some young kid making a whole lot of ton of money. And I think, uh, but for all these people it's deserved, they put in a ton of hard work. Um, they're hopefully contributing to a school, a team and a university and bringing people in the stands and doing all sorts of things like that. So I I mean, I think it's a great thing. I think it was a thing that was coming along. I wouldn't be surprised in the next like five years or so if like the dynamic of college football changes because of NIL, like if you see like a, like I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a 30, 40 or maybe even 50 team, like, like, you know, like there's like the power five conferences. It's like the sec, like the big 10, mm-hmm. Ohio state, Michigan, you know, like USC, UCLA, kind of like the big, the big name schools. I wouldn't be surprised if you see like a, almost like a league of like 40 or 30 so teams and there's, I mean, I don't know if there'll be ever a cap of NIL. I hope, uh-huh. I hope there isn't, but I think there could be some more like structure for those teams that can really hang, I guess, and provide money for like the top athletes in the world. So I, I think it's I wouldn't call be, them the NFL. Team yeah, I know. Like yeah, that. that's. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't be surprised if it kind of gets along to that to that yeah. kind of future. Because like one thing about I think the hardest thing about NIL is what it has done for coaches. I think coaching football would be an awesome thing to do. And I think coaches still want to do that tremendously, but like an offensive coordinator's job in 2020, it's like they recruit high school kids. They like want to put the best players on the field. Like they got to, and they got to call the right plays, call the X's and O's, like study the opposing team's defense. But mm-hmm. now they got to recruit high schoolers. They got to recruit, kind of make sure their own team's going to stay intact. They got to recruit college players like from other transfer or from transferring in the portal and um they got to kind of structure i'm sure there's like there's a couple of guys helping around too there's like recruiting departments and all that but they also kind of got to structure 
like who's getting paid what and that's just a whole lot like in the nfl this is what one thing i remember people were asking me about like liam cohen leaving and i'm not speculating on i mean he coaching the nfl is something that um very little people get to do same thing with college but like in the NFL, there's general managers. There's all sorts of guys who never even get close to like calling a football play. And like offensive court there in the NFL spends much more of their time just studying defense, studying their own players, mm-hmm. and uh, seeing how they can just put the best product of football on the actual football field, not worrying about what um, yeah. on some like 17 year old do- is doing. And then you got to worry about some 22 yeah. year old transfer and who's getting paid what on your team. So I think, uh, and that's also one thing that the bigger schools could also provide more more positions to a team. So kind of like you can delegate more. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Money just, money just becomes a, a wild factor for the whole thing. Yeah. Cause I, <laughs> I still don't think NIL has been around nearly long enough to see some of this, but I think what we're going to start, I think long term, what we start seeing is that a lot of kids get into sports in general because the parents put them in mm-hmm. sports to try to change the direction that their families have historically yeah. gone. Like growing up in a, an area that maybe isn't the best mm-hmm. area of town. Um, like, okay, we're going to, you're going to play sp- soccer, yeah, whatever. basketball, football, something so that you can get on a career path and maybe like your kids don't have to grow up in that same yeah, kind of same situation, right? Did. And then once money now is like in the picture, and that was like sort of the back reason for being in sports in general anyway. Mm-hmm. Like I wonder if we're going to start seeing NIL. Maybe if I'm trying to figure out how to articulate what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, maybe that storyline comes out a little bit more clearly of like, well... I'm not actually into the sports part. I'm into the money part. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I, I right yeah. now the narrative is like, oh, no, I love sports. I love playing cor- yeah, like like high school quarterback. Yeah, I high freaking school, yeah. love that. Or I love, you know, playing basketball. It's like, but that was the vehicle to the money. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think is going to be the narrative that comes out for a lot of people. Not everybody, of course. No, but I, yeah, for a lot I, of people, I, do I think that I, I that's going to come out. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that's going to change a lot of the personality and the culture of sports Mm -hmm. because then the thing that's secretly motivating people right now, money is not going to be so secretly motivating them in the future. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I definitely agree. I, um, I remember like you, I've heard a couple of stories of like a offensive lineman in the NFL who's had all sorts of injuries and stuff. And they're like, yeah, man, like I, I do love football, but at this point in my life, it's not, um, it's not, it's almost getting to the point where it's not worth it by making so much money to where this is the only reason why I'm doing it now. Mm -hmm. So I think you can, there will be stories that like, like you just said, that will develop in college and probably already have. And, um, so I think, I think that's a definite, uh, strong, like a real life story for probably quite a few people already in college football today that, um, they're so talented and everything, but, um, maybe it's starting to fade a little bit for them, like the enjoyment of football. But, um, it's still changing their lives or um, yeah. a whole lot of other ways through money and denial. But, um, and sometimes, I mean, for a lot of people that sacrifice may be well worth it. So I think it's hard to put myself in people's shoes like that. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, but I, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I definitely do. What are you studying right now? Finance. Finance, so, right? Yes. I graduated from Georgia Southern, but I'm going to get my finance degree at Kentucky. That's, I, that's what I was taking my first time. Is it a graduate Kentucky. degree, right? No, it's no? A, I'm just doing my undergrad okay. and, um, I hope I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing, but I think I'm, uh, I will be able to start my MBA in the fall, but I may okay. do it fall or the start of the second semester in January, but that's the track time on school wise. Yeah. And what'd you say long-term you want to do? I want to uh, do wealth management or that's investment right. advising. Yeah. Um, the main reason why like that industry has changed so much since like, like, I mean, I was telling my girlfriend, like, I was kind of explaining to her like what, um, that kind of job is. And I was kind of explaining to her how the industry has changed, but like one way I explained it to her is to, for her to make sense. I was like, do you remember what the Wolf of Wall Street was like, like that movie? I was like, so that industry changed from where like he's trying to like, where there's a whole lot of room for bad people to do bad things. And that industry kind of changed where 
like a client would open up to me, like open up to an investment advisor, explain like how much money they'd be willing to invest, how much money is coming in and coming out of their lives with um, their jobs or um, what kind of expenses they have in their life. And then you can kind of read on what kind of investments they would want, what kind of investments that you think they would be beneficial towards them. And then you kind of go upon that and build a strong relationship with those people. But that's, I'm kind of, I'm pretty passionate about like investing in general, but I think from, I've done a couple internships in my life and uh, I think there's a lot of um, room for just a good, true, strong person to develop the right things for the right people in the Mm -hmm. industry. And that's something I'm pretty passionate about is that um, there's a lot of ways to help people, but I, I, what a, I think there's a lot of clients or a lot of people who invest with financial advisors or wealth managers, and um, they maybe don't know exactly what is going on. And I'm not saying people are doing anything bad by any means. Yeah. I'm just saying that um, maybe some transparency may not be exactly there of why we're doing this or why we're doing that, or like what you may be really invested in and kind of understand the pros and the cons of um, investments. But that's what I'm going to do when yeah. I'm done playing football and out uh, of college. That's great. I mean, one of, that's one of the areas like I wish I had more knowledge coming out of school was really understanding mm-hmm. like what to do with money, mm-hmm. you know, long term and coming out of college, being in considerable student loan debt, like most people seem to be um, like right now, it doesn't seem appropriate to like go and do all sorts of investments because, you know, got to get out of the student mm-hmm. loan debt hole. But I'd be curious to see, I mean, do you know of any resources that exist right now for people that are not in a, like, just free cash sitting around to invest in whatever, I but think, you're, like, you um, are trying to do the appropriate thing, like pay off certain debts, but also you kind of want to learn more and start Yeah, you know, I think maybe like, playing in that um, game? Like if I was a, like there's a couple of licenses I have to get and I've actually started looking at yeah. um, which ones I will get and study, started studying a little bit for them. Um, I think that, like, I, I would say like there's probably some guys out there who are managing a ton of money and they would just be like, I don't, like it's not worth my time. Yeah. But like, like for me, like let's say if in two or three, like whenever that day is when I'm done playing football or college, six, seven, eight years, like, I don't know when. Um, but like, I think that, um, and that's what a lot of those guys jobs are. So I think like, I think going to a guy and kind of explaining where you're at and saying like, I don't know, some guys are kind of some, I don't, not like a kind of progressive thinker may just be like hard nose and be like, I only accept this much money or something. Yeah, but yeah. like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like that. Definitely. Like I always want to help any way I can understand like what you're doing and start investing in the way that you, um, can and, I mean, I, I think there would be people that, or I, I would really hope so that, because I mean, yeah. like, not, um, like that's one of the things that bothers me is like, I'm the more that I talk to people and I learn, uh, the concept of investing and like the options that are out there is it's plentiful, but you got to have the, the money to do it mm-hmm. and not just the money, but you have to have the knowledge to even know that yeah. uh, how that works and how do you get a return and really understanding, you know, when to pull money out, when do you touch it, when do you not, like mm-hmm. all of that kind of stuff. I would say I definitely come from a, a middle-class family and you know, like that was never on our radar. Not really a thing to talk about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like when we talk about the middle class and salaries not really increasing and trying to stretch a dollar even more with inflation it's like surely there's got to be something where investing we don't have to be talking about thousands of dollars mm-hmm. but i wonder if there's a really creative way that we could take similar philosophies and concepts that people play with you know big bucks if we could do that at a much smaller scale that could still influence and help people you know yeah uh, uh, not necessarily like to retire off of this money that they're making Mm-hmm. But maybe it's something that helps them get, I don't know, thousand bucks a month or so. Yeah, or, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, like, I think that like it all, um, it all kind of depends on the person and what, like what your goals are and like what you'd be wanting to do. But I think I, I definitely do agree. Like I, um, I haven't researched every outlet of the world, but there definitely isn't, I think there's definitely some room for 
uh, like opportunity for that, for somebody to really approach and kind of um, provide true value in that sense that a lot of people won't. Um, and that's one, like, so when I was started, like when I started this conversation about like the whole, like, Wolf of Wall Street thing and kind of how the industry's kind of changed in that way. It's one thing the industry has changed, and I think maybe a bad way, is that um, a lot of people, um, like often a lot of people want to be wealth managers and investment advisors because once you do manage some money, a lot of, like you don't, I don't say you don't have to, but a lot of people get in there because you don't, or get into the business because, um, you, I mean, you, you can kind of work, like, depending on what it's like, you can kind of work all, like oftentimes on your own terms compared to other pursuits that you have. And there's mm-hmm. a bit of like entrepreneurship in it. Like you have to build a book of business that you manage, but, um, like 30, 40 or that like 20, 30 years down the road, there's a, there's a lot of opportunity to have more of a passive kind of lifestyle because like, let's say if you give, um, like if I manage a hundred thousand dollars, I would like my earnings on that would be a thousand dollars a year. And as long as my client would want to stay with me, hopefully that money grows. And I don't know. I mean, if that grows like 12, 12, 15% year after year, that number will change and my number will change over the next however long, but down the road, um, like when those, that when that amount starts to grow and grow that you see a lot of advisors and a lot of people in the business kind of just, um, I mean, I, and somebody's comfortable with their lifestyle. I'm not ch- saying that they should change much, but I feel like there's some uh, people that kind of lay off the brakes in terms of looking at what are the best investments for these people. And it just comes into, I did this job because of what the benefits are not to mm-hmm. improve and grow people's money the way that it should. And I think that that kind of goes back to what we're talking about is that a lot of people are in the business of, I joined this business to make a lot of money and to do it um, with, uh, I, I just did this business. I did this occupation for the benefits of it, not to really improve somebody else's life and yeah. to and provide the value that I need, like not the value that I want, but the value that somebody else needs. Unfortunately, you know I feel like a lot of people yeah. in their jobs <laughs> yeah, for that reason, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, but, uh, I guess I'm good enough at this thing. I'll do it. Not because I actually enjoy helping people, but yeah, just because I, it pays my bills and gives me health insurance. Yeah, I, t- I totally agree. <laughs> and like, I think like to anybody that does think that way, it's like, you may make more money within the next five years, but I promise you probably won't in the next like 10, 15. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. Like yeah. that, uh, customer who maybe you provided the real value that you need, like you're, you help a customer because you want to, because you want to provide the most value to them that, Maybe you don't make as much money for whatever reason in the next, yeah. like in the short term, but maybe you'll get referrals of some sort over the next course of the next 10, 15 years that it'll all come full circle. And that's probably one reason why I'm interested in it. But it's all kind of goes back to our first topic of the conversation was that um, a lot of people, and I mean, I get it. If you're like 40, 50 years old and you're managing a ton of money, it really may like, used to be like, I don't want to do that, but I understand like you had other things going on in your life. But, um, I think mostly people who like want to do this business to grow people's money the right way, mm-hmm. that they should be more open to helping somebody out anyway or, or fashion yeah. as, as long as, um, um, you can do that and you can provide real value. No, yeah, for sure. I got a random off the wall question, totally unrelated. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard this on a, I think it was on TikTok but it was taken from somebody that had a podcast. Um, and I don't recall if I've ever asked this question on the podcast, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Like when I first heard it, it kind of caught me off guard because I thought it was very thoughtful and just so different. But the question was like, if you, if you could walk into a room of everybody you've ever met in your life, who would be the first person that you would seek out? I thought that was a really yeah, interesting was, question. Yeah. Like, that's a of great everybody question. you've ever met, whether it's on an elevator, a family member, a Shoot. famous person, yeah. just a, awesome the question. person that made a sandwich, like literally anybody, yeah. like, who would be the first? Um, shoot. I don't know if I can. Even... Like that question just yeah. seems that's, heavy no, that's also because it's like, yeah. wow, there's probably like, that's an it awesome could be question. a handful of people yeah. that you're like, I, wow, like, this is like the. I always thought my grandmother was like the most powerful person in my life. But then you're like, Oh, well this other person, like, anyway, so I thought it was an yeah. intriguing question. So I figured I'd ask. That, yeah. Like, 
my girlfriend would be up there, but then I'll like I would say like past relatives. If that, if, or you talking about dead or a lot or like all together? Anybody you've ever met? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, like I don't think I could put on one person, but like a past relative would be up there. Like just any um, any person anybody who's not who, here who's not here anymore. That anybody um, in particular? I don't know. <laughs> that's uh, that's tough. You're like my uncle Gary that died. Like, he was really cool. Or you know, yeah. He, I don't know. Um, my grandfather's or my on, on on my dad's side, I called him Papaw. He probably, if I maybe the first one that came to my mind. So oh yeah, he, why is that? Um, he was he was super straight up, like straightforward with you. I thought he'd tell you like the good and the bad of whatever you were doing. Um, like he passed away in 2020, but um, he's a huge football fan. Like he, would, I remember like in high school we would take a like I took a visit to Kentucky. And like, and Coach Seuss was with us one time, like right before, either before or after like one of their games. So I can't remember what game. And um, he was like, he was all there mentally, but like he could like he couldn't see very well, and he was um, like, just then. I mean, he couldn't move around the best. Not bad, but um, but I forgot what he exactly said. But he like had the first time ever talking to him, like. He was talking to Coach Stoops, and I don't feel this way whatsoever. He was like, "You're not going to screw my grandson, are you?" Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, like first time he had like first words. I think he ever said to him, like, or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what he said, but just uh, I guess uh, he figured out. I don't know. <laughs> no, was, yeah. I'll just say whatever is coming to mind today. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that I kind of update him on my life, and mm-hmm. what I'm up to now, like what's happened over the course of the past three or four years, and like why I've done that. So I think if, yeah. that'd probably be the first person I'd. That's if cool. I if I did, if I had to choose one. So I'd, do you admire that uh, that <clears throat> ability to sort of speak in a very unfiltered way? Yeah, I, and I, not I, hold yourself back. Yeah, I do. Um, I think that this is probably something I could even do a better job of, and um, I, I I do. I think that mostly when you're like you're trying to look out for somebody that you love, and if you have something that. It's like the power to help somebody that you truly enjoy and want to be around, even if it may like hurt them in the short term or hurt their feelings or something. I that's a power that's really strong that most people probably don't do. It's like, um, like for example, him saying that, like that probably would frustrate me in the short term, but maybe mm-hmm. he's really, I mean, I don't think goes to like, but then you it, understand like where that, the intent. Behind yeah, the exactly. Question, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Like I guess, Trying to do whatever's the best for somebody, even if that's maybe piss them off or something in the next yeah. 10, 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I think that kind of, uh, yeah, that's something I would value. And I think, um, I, I definitely think I can work on that. I think probably a lot of people can. So, how do you, you know, we kind of touched on this earlier, but like culture within a team. I mean, I would imagine part of your job, uh, being a quarterback is to help in one of the senior guys on the team. Mm-hmm to help bring especially the young guys yeah uh or just new guys to the program in general Mm -hmm. together and try to figure out how do we get to this year's basketball's like personality and how well they they gel and they're unselfish and they're having a good time on the court Mm -hmm. and holding each other accountable like how do you do that for the football team like i the easiest ways that you can do that like the first one that always comes to my mind is by example like you're never late. You're like before, you're always on time, always early, and you just treat people the right way. Like try to like know everybody's name, or at least try to know everybody's name and talk to people. And then, I mean, that just kind of escalates into like in the film room, for example. Like for an older guy, for any kind of quarterback, but especially for an older guy, I think it's really important to like know everything that you can. Like if a wide receiver has a question on what he's supposed to do on this play, like it'd be really great for me to know that and be able to help him out. And then. Um, and you can do that with probably every position. Like there's some things on the offensive line, like for example, like when we're running a run play, they'll call out certain blocks. That's something that I don't know. But when I can know that, that will be even more beneficial to younger guys and people that could really mm-hmm. actually help out. And then that can expand to like if like we were doing some like agility drills uh, on this past Tuesday and Thursday, if uh, somebody's really, really, really tired, but like if – like we don't want anybody like to bend over or something or like put their hands on their knees and like fall over or just people to stand tall and kind of helping that kind of pride that you have in yourself to um, kind of infiltrate throughout the team and like finish doing a lot. Like if you're going to do one kind of sprint, make sure you finish through the line. It kind of just carry a culture that 
Um, my coach Stoops established a long time ago and kind of keep that going in all areas from like the football field to the film room mm-hmm. to when we're learning about plays and then to even like in the cafeteria and you're talking to um, one of the people that serves our food that I think that um, as a senior and as an older guy that you should be kind of obliged to do things like that. And that's what um, I think would create a standard that stays for a long time and that will definitely stay within the current team, but could stay for years to come. So I I think that's a way that people can impact the football team. Like I've been, I've played four seasons of college football and only really started one of them. So I think that's one thing that like if a player's not playing and you're wondering about how can you impact the team in another way, that's Mm -hmm. a, a thing that comes to my mind. So I think that's one way that an older guy and can impact the team on the field and off the field, especially. Yeah. Like, do the younger players, do they ever walk into a program and feel empowered to be a, to exemplify those same kind of behaviors and to become a leader? I mean, I think, I mean, you're probably I mean, like a, only as strong as your weakest yeah, person, right? Yes, yes. So, yeah, I think there's definitely, I mean, in, or youngest. Yeah, maybe. in college yeah. football, there's like, we probably got like 110 guys on the team or something. So, mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people and it's hard to just get everybody on the same tracks at some points, but I think that, um, you would see, hopefully like this is why I like, maybe not everybody's like that when you first get, there's probably a couple guys who are like wanting to take their life up to that standard as soon as they get there. But some people may take a little bit longer along the way. Um, so I think there are some people who maybe like want to take a step up or a little more mature in their life even once they get to college, but like, I, I don't think I was, but there were people who, um, I saw like come to football every day and were the same people every day, like through the highs and the lows. So I think that, um, most of the people probably comes over time, but I bet there are some people who are a little more ready to take that kind of step mm-hmm. of maturity in themselves and, uh, try to impact others and not be, I guess, so self-centered. Yeah. You know, it's always kind of interesting because the nature of, collegiate athletics in particular football and basketball these things are just they're so much more grand than some of the other sports Mm -hmm. or any of the other sports for that matter you know Mm -hmm. between having merch lines um you know having victory parades when things go well Mm -hmm. uh having whole sports shows and like drafting tv shows of like you coming out of high school getting like where where are you going to go to school you know Mm -hmm. or going into the nfl it's like the actual nfl draft like these things are just there's a lot of pomp and circumstance around that stuff Mm -hmm. and so it's easy to elevate the people that are associated with it as like superhuman you know like Mm -hmm. that's a world we can never really imagine because it it looks like your life is a tv show Mm -hmm. um but we forget just how everybody really is just a person yeah yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah absolutely. and like what you just described was like so basic sounding but not diminishing the power mm-hmm. of those things but just saying that like knowing somebody's name being mm-hmm. nice to other people yes. uh leading by example like these are classic things that we hear in other places that we all can associate with mm-hmm. so it's really kind of interesting because i guess maybe this is a projection of mine but like i would think you know we put athletes on a pedestal that you got that part figured out that's too basic you know Mm -hmm. that maybe there's something else to culture building yeah what it sounds like is maybe not yeah i'm uh, elevating you beyond a place that's responsible and it's like you're just people yeah i think just do the basics like one thing i want to say about that it's like how coach stoops manages a program compared i mean i've been in two other programs that i loved how they were managed and how we all were but um, like Coach Stoops treats us a lot more like men than mm-hmm. I'd say the majority of college football programs do. Like um, he, we have more free time. And when I mean free time, like he would say like, like he doesn't just want us to, like coach to schedule things just so we're not going to do the, like a wrong thing, for example. Mm-hmm. Like uh, um, a lot of coaches would, um, I'm trying to think of a good example here. But, I th- but basically what I'm trying to say is that he respects our time. He treats us like men, not like um, like high school boys and stuff all the time. Um, he, for example, I was talking to Brock Vandegrift and like at Georgia. And I'm, I'm 
obviously they've they've been working out. <laughs> you know, they've won two of the past three national championships. But um, like a, a lot of programs are ran are a lot more of the way on, on the forms of Georgia in terms of like there there are things that they will make you do just to come here, like just to, just to occupy your time. To where like you're like not gonna, what what does that mean? Like so, let's say like like my day yesterday. This like we had a meeting at seven. We had a, a kind of agility thing right around eight. And then we threw for a little bit around like eight thirty to nine, and I was done about ten thirty. Didn't have anything like else with football to do the whole rest of the day. A lot of teams will have a similar schedule like that. Then they'll come back and have like a lift at like at like three or three thirty. They could have done the lift at like ten or ten thirty, but they probably just mm-hmm. want to occupy more people's time. Like people want, they just want them to be around the football facility more instead of kind of just being kind of more time convenient, like. Um, like we would it's almost here. like micromanaging you though too right yeah I, I by like so. scheduling out the lift or some other sort of workout mm-hmm. it sounds like they give you that flexibility to know that like okay dude you figured out you know you need to go to the weight room like, yes just yeah, go yeah. wherever you can um, which gives you the flexibility to do other things of course too but maybe also gives you a little bit more sense of trust yeah here's like not yeah, telling like, you what to do yeah one thing that makes sense about how this like kind of our topic is now it's like it's like when we do our strength and conditioning stuff at Kentucky we don't like we'll never like a lot of people's perception of strength and conditioning is like just getting on the line like putting your hand in there and just running across the field like 30 sometimes you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. you see that in movies a lot of programs do that today like we do none of that like we only work on we're not only but we do stuff that solely makes us the best football player that we can be like we don't spend our time on, um, like for example, at uh, Georgia Southern, and I'm not saying one is so much better than the other, but I'm saying that at Kentucky they treat us more like men. They treat us more like pro football players. So like at Georgia Southern and other places I've been, like there will be stuff that we do. We do it just because it is hard. Mm. Like it won't benefit. Like if you're like, what yeah. does this do for like? even for a linebacker to quarterback, I know quarterback's a different position, so I'm not even going to talk about what I would do at quarterback, but like, let's say, um, like we're going to run up and down the stadium for like the next hour and a half. Yeah. And I'm sure that, I mean, that helps your legs. That helps your, like that helps a lot of things, Yeah, but that helps your cardio endurance. That helps your endurance. But like there are, like, if you're going to spend that hour and a half, I could like, and I'm not even a strength and conditioning guy, but I'm sure our guys at Kentucky would think of a lot of other ways to help these guys become better football right. players. And that's what you see in like in the NFL. Like I've talked to some guys that come back and a lot of the strength training is really on their own, but the guys who they go to, it's not like what you used to, like what most people do in college. Like you get in line, you run gassers, you just run across the field as many times, like two or three mm-hmm. times and wait a second and do it again. It's not, um, it's our time is spent to become the best football players that we can be. Like, we still like we work on our explosiveness, um, all sorts of stuff like that, our strength, but we don't just get on the line and do hard things. Like, we don't yeah. like so much more targeted and yes, specific yes. and intentional and thoughtful. Exactly. Yes, stuff, exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I think that kind of also reflects kind of Coach Stoops' philosophy of respecting yeah. us as uh, men and kind of giving us some of that, um, it's giving us that respect that also kind of, I think that, and giving us that respect also gives us, um, I think a more, more of an objective to lead others. Like it's not like yeah. we're not, we don't have to be told to do everything because kind of coach Stoops has set that standard. So like, I'm not sure what it was like 10 years ago. Yeah. It may have been a little bit different. No, but, I mean, man, I think that totally makes sense that they would lead by letting you actually lead yourself. Mm-hmm through most of that stuff. Yeah. And it's worked. I mean, you see guys like older guys lead to younger guys from all from offense, defense, every single position. Yeah. So well, I it gives you ownership of the program. Exactly. Yes. I mean, that's part of the problem. I've talked about this just in general with education. Mm-hmm. Cause if you think about going to, to class right now, like mm-hmm. even you right now as a fifth year senior, they're going to give you a schedule. Mm-hmm. They're going to tell you what professor is going to teach it. You didn't have any decision sure, yeah. behind that. They're going to tell you what room it's in. That professor is going to come up with a curriculum for you. All the furniture, all the things, all the, everything is supplied. Mm-hmm. Your only job is to walk into the room and sit down and just listen and be a sponge, you know? Mm-hmm. So because you weren't really part of any of the other parts, it's like there's a real lack of ownership over yeah. I, the I experience. Would, yeah, I would agree. 
And so here, what you're talking about is, yeah, you know, uh, going to get together as a team, maybe have some meetings, like whatever that is from seven to 1030. Cool. But the rest is all on you. Mm-hmm. And obviously that is going to translate into the mindset and ownership of the game and showing up on time for, you know, game day kind of activities mm-hmm. or that you're going to make the right choice on a Friday night before a home game yeah. that you're not going to go and do something dumb yeah. or yeah, just it, thought, it trickles yeah. in and shows up in other decision making yeah. way beyond football. And that's mm-hmm. a really smart thing. Like the last thing I'd say about that is in 2022, or 2021, we were playing Iowa in the Citrus Bowl. And in those bowl games, you have a lot of events where you're hanging out with the other team. They had, and like you're there the whole week. Our game was on Saturday. We got there, I think Saturday night or Sunday morning. And uh, like I, remember, I was talking to the Iowa guys. They had a 10 o'clock curfew every single night the whole week. And um, we didn't have a curfew until the night before the game. So, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And we won. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not saying that that's the exact reason why you win, why you win a game or not. Yeah, but, but it's trust. Yeah, exactly. It's trust, yeah. and I think that builds up people a lot. Yeah. So, I, that's one thing I would want well, to And I'm include. curious, you know, what does that say, not necessarily for the Iowa team, but, you know, in those kind of situations, it's like, did something occur mm-hmm. earlier in the season that's like, yeah. okay, we got to – We got to lock down on these guys. Yeah. yeah. We don't really have the maturity on the team to make good decisions. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's always kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. That, the culture that micromanagement can create or destroy, I guess. Yeah, it is but, interesting. Yeah. All right. So when you're not doing football stuff, like what are you doing? I um I love to like we were talking about earlier. I love to yeah. read about investments, even if yeah. I'm not like able to invest the money that you'd want to. I like to read about what's going on in the world and in that form. Same thing with real estate a little bit, but mainly I just I like reading about all sorts of investments and um kind of looking at like YouTube, like just YouTube videos of all sorts of things like that, or kind of old, uh, like Warren Buffett's probably like the main guy I like to read about. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'd say that's like, I've spent, I probably read a little bit like 30 minutes an hour a day of some sort of time spent on that. Yeah. But that's, that's probably the main like hobby. I'd say I like keeping up with outside of football and school. That's mainly what I do. Do you find any sort of correlation from investments to sports? Um, is there anything they, between like disciplines or, I discipline, or, or yeah, something? Like, I, I think like um, one of the biggest tools I think like the best investors have is their mm-hmm. like their psychology and that they don't get really too like if there's like a let's say if you bought like Apple or so you bought a share of Apple and let's say Apple like let's say Tim Cook like their CEO had a for whatever reason he's going to leave apple for the next three months i'm sure their share their stock price would drop but that's probably actually a better time to buy more shares of apple yeah. because but you'd also lower. have a lot of people that are trying to sell because the value goes down exactly right? yeah so i think like a lot of the people that um do not have the just the mind strength would would sell apple in that example that's the classic warren buffett thing yeah right? yeah like exactly you, yeah you buy it and you just hang on to that bad yeah, boy and hang, it's yeah. always gonna just do this yes like um and that's what so there's a book called The Intelligent Investor. It was written mm-hmm. by a guy named Benjamin Graham, who was he was one of Warren Buffett's professors at Columbia. And Warren Buffett, he gave Warren Buffett I guess, his first job, and he was like, I want to say that Warren Buffett before him because he, I don't, there was kind of some differences. But he he taught it's kind of like the main like if Warren if you ask Warren Buffett who's your mentor, he would say this guy. Mm-hmm. And so I think the core the kind of what correlates between athletics and that kind of part of investing is if you make a strong decision and you're educated and you know, you're educated to stick with the strong decision that you made and take advantage of an uneducated person making a snap decision. Like that'd be like yeah. selling a stock or something. Even if some, like I said, like Tim cook is going to be gone for three months, but that surely that really shouldn't change like the entire outlook of Apple. You know what I'm saying? Like we all yeah. got like Apple phones or, you know what I'm saying? So I yeah. think so and a lot of people would sell their Apple shares, but um somebody who probably would do that, if you asked them why did you buy it, they probably wouldn't have a great reason to give you. Yeah. So I think and how that correlates into football is probably I think this probably correlates in every area of life. It's like if you're educated about a subject and you know you are and you have like deserved confidence in your decision making, whatever subject that is, then um don't really listen to whatever somebody who obviously isn't as educated or um yeah. Or making short term, yeah, just making like a, yeah, making a short term decision that goes yeah. against 
um, the reason why you did something, you did it for the long term. So yeah. I think uh, those are two correlations I'd have, but that kind of correlates probably to yeah. a lot of decisions in life, really. That's cool. Well, man, I appreciate you uh, coming and just chit-chatting. No, it's been I know fun. we haven't seen yeah. each other for a little bit. Yeah, it's been fun. Have you uh, any any news on like a podcast front, starting your own thing? No, I, I don't. I, hopefully by, I don't want to say exact time. Maybe, maybe in the summer, but it's yeah. something I've been wanting to do, but yeah, taking a little time to. Well, let me know. There's a studio <laughs> I, I know about that you can use if you need to use it. So uh, That'd be awesome. Yeah, you just press record and go. So <laughs> what would it be about? Like I would, you so said, that, you just enjoy talking to people. That's right? yeah. I think it'd be like um, kind of similar to how your operation is. Like you, uh, I would. I mean, this is how I like. I would ask myself like, who would I want to talk to, and who could I actually talk to? And then I just try to see if those people would be interested in talking. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like it'd be like, if, yeah, who could I talk to on anybody in the world? Like who currently is reachable? Like who could I talk? Who would to? you want to? Who um, are like three people right now? Do you remember? Like I would probably want to talk to um, Matt Jones is kind of interesting to me. Be, like I would, as in KSR. Yeah. Jones? Okay. I would. Um, I'd probably like why like his journey or like starting the KSR. Why starting that some? Or, um, like I could also want to talk about some of like, his political interests. But one friend, like one guy that I've kind of became friends with, um, his name's Nicholas Sandman. So mm-hmm. he, I don't know if you remember. Like in 20, probably like 2019, 2018, there was a, he was at Covenant, he was a student at Covenant Catholic. Mm-hmm. And there, there was a big, um, he was like, it was in DC. And I don't want to say, so there was, I guess there was a protation, or there was a protest, there were pro abortion and uh, pro life people. Mm-hmm. And I think there was kind of a bit of a conflict. And um, he's pro life, he came with his school. And there was a, picture of him and i'm not trying I to get vaguely re- yeah you i don't the, remember you're gonna have to jog my memory but so now there's, that there's a picture of him like, and yeah, yeah there's a man who's like of some indian descent and there's a picture of him and, and it kind of just and it was the whole thing about the like that CN, guy like, maybe approached him right like, so like, like cnn was, had a picture of him yeah. that said like it would be like 16 year old kid is like harassing like Native yeah. American or like I, I can't I'm not gonna try to say exactly what he said, but yeah. Um I got I've got I met him probably two or three years ago and I have a lot of respect for him just for having the uh um kind of just I mean, he's probably been through a lot. Like he was I remember he was telling me the situation. It was like he was coming home from his it was like eighth grade or freshman year, like D C trip that also but there was a pro life thing that and they all believed in that so they wanted to go. And like his phone, like there's a picture of him on CNN talking about how he just harassed a man. And mm-hmm. like, there'd be people coming to the school of talk, like just like people yelling his name, like outside of the school that he was trying to go to when he was a freshman and every, yeah. or I'm not sure what year he exactly was, but, um, he's, and I kind of got to understand him as a person a little bit and understanding what he went through. Uh, that'd be a person that I actually, I, I talked to him when I was first talking about Korean, I was like, I'm not sure, like, would you even be interested in doing that kind of stuff? Like talking about like that kind of part of your life. He actually said like, absolutely. But I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? If something yeah. like, I'm not in his shoes. I don't know if he wants to talk about that <laughs> this kind of stuff again. Yeah. But, um, I'd want to talk to him, but really I mean, any, like from, I like to, like, I'd want to talk to like all sorts of people. Like I'd want to talk to, like, I'm really interested in all sorts of things. Like mm-hmm. I would, want to bring a priest in here one day and like ask him about probably the real, like just the, I'm a confirmed Catholic and I absolutely believe in God, but, um, I love, but I would also be interested in hearing like the next day having somebody who is, um, who has the complete, or maybe in, doesn't believe in in God or any kind of Mm -hmm. afterlife. But so, I mean, I think my goal would be like weekly guests of all sorts of walks of life. And if they would be interested in spend some time talking about whatever they'd want to or, yeah. If some they didn't want to, that's kind of what that the, sounds cool. the framework would be. And like, do be, it. Yeah. That's what, but so it'd be kind of weird. There'd be some very, like one day there'd be an athlete, the next day who in the world knows what kind yeah. of person could be walking <laughs> in the door. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that could be really cool. I think, you know, yeah. the through line just being, you know, it's you, but it's also interesting conversations about maybe, uh, not unusual subjects mm-hmm. for, people in the room but 
just maybe conversations that you don't get to hear every day. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and like one thing I enjoy and one thing I say I'm proud of myself is I'm like, I enjoy talking to people that like I would disagree with about something, but I think mm -hmm. there's like any disagreement absolutely should never turn into an argument. You know what I'm saying? Like I think it's perfectly yeah. fine to disagree with people. And um, like there's plenty of friends in the world that I have disagreements with that some people would probably even be upset with me that you'd even, I get what I'm saying. I think, yeah. I, I think that there's a lot of great <laughs> relationships with people that maybe end because of just a disagreement turns into an argument, but I'm strongly against that, that it's very fine and great to have <laughs> relationships with people, even if you disagree yeah. on something that could be pretty important. Yeah. I was just thinking about like an ironic thing of, yeah, those people are stupid <laughs> for disagreeing. <No. laughs> yeah. <laughs> just being silly. But yeah, well, yeah, let me know if you want to ever use the space. Oh, thank I mean, you. Gears just sitting here. So let me know. But, uh, Very I, nice. It's always good to hang. We always have a good conversation. So let's do it again sometime oh, yeah. if you want. Sounds great. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. It's yeah, fun doing this. Of course. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Lexington Business Show. Go right now, rate and review the podcast. It's how we grow and thrive and how we get more listeners and get to do a lot more cool stuff here on the show. Thank you.